kingdom in that good news. In that good news. Jesus, sing that good news, good news. I got a in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a in that Salvation being appointed for walls and bulwarks. Uh -huh. tell, tell, tells us uh, that God intends to keep that which He redeems. Amen. Amen. And uh, the appointment of, of the kingdom of men and giving it to whomsoever He wills, it, it, it tells me that God is a governor, and He's the governor among the nations. Amen. How about the appointment of the apostle and high priest? God is intent on saving men to the uttermost, and we just spoke of that mm -hmm. just now. How about the appointment of heirship? God is a rewarder. So yeah. each of these appointments that he has determined, these things that these decrees, I like that. Mm -hmm. These things that he has determined to take place, they tell us of who he is and of what he has purposed uh, to do. The appointment of the judgment day, that God is just and men are accountable. Amen. The appointment unto men to die once, then the judgment. God's purpose extends beyond this world and beyond this body. Uh -huh. yes, amen. See, he's showing us of himself and what he has intended to do. Appointment of afflictions for the saints, that God is compassionate mm -hmm. and also knows the benefit of suffering for yeah. righteousness. Amen. So, so they're, they're, they, they reveal him. How about the appointment of times and bounds for men? God is wise. Yes, amen. amen. The appointment of a kingdom, God is the Lord uh, who entrusts possessions to stewards. Certainly there's many other things that are revealed from this, but these are some of the things that I uh, thought about. The appointment not to wrath, but to obtaining salvation that God desires primarily to save. Yes. Amen. We learn this about Him based upon this appointment. Yeah. He appoint, appointed the law and established the testimony. God calls, God initiates, God instructs, God, mm -hmm. God, God takes the first step. Yes. The appointment of the defeat of good counsel. God's ways are higher than man's ways. Mm. Amen. They appointed each day for a year. How about that? God is a revealer. Mm. He, he reveals things. So I, I, I bring all those up because what I want to uh, stress to you uh, through this text is that God is a comforter. Yes, amen. Yes. 
that God is righteous mm -hmm. and just and that God is good. Mm -hmm. He's yes. benevolent. Amen. He does not shelter his people from heartache and turmoil. Neither does he leave them to cope alone. Amen. Yes. Amen. He allows the famine and then he gives the food. Mm -hmm. He allows the drought and then he brings the rain. This is how God is. Yeah. He allows mourning and then he brings comfort. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the latter provision is always more prominent than the former. Amen. 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 So what he gives you initially, what he gives you, uh, so he bring, he allows you to mourn, but then he brings the comfort, and the comfort will actually cause you to to, to almost lose sight, to forget yes. about the yes. mourning. Yeah. In other words, the comfort is of such delight that you can forget the days of mourning and the days yes. of turmoil. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Now I think about this text, and I and uh, here's here's what I, I want to say that the day has dawned. No doubt the blessed appointments mentioned in Isaiah 61, they just sound good. They just sound good to the ears. Don't they just read these? They just, they just minister to you the very Amen. text of Scripture. We mm -hmm. want to give a, attention to the public reading of Scripture. Just, just hearing, just, uh, well, it blesses me. But when, when would such things be accessible to the children of God? And who does the, of who does, remember this, this question, of who does the prophet speak, of himself or of another? <laughs> I kind of thought about that. You know, you, you can bring this up. Well, Jesus answered these questions when he was in the synagogue. Yes. When he returned with power after being tempted in the yeah. wilderness, uh, he came to Nazareth, as was his custom. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up and he read. And after he read these words, he said something that changed everything. Right? He, he said, here, well, here's what he said. <laughs> this day... Is this scripture fulfilled yes. Yes. Amen. in your hearing? See, there's a great benefit Amen. to be in, in the hearing. There's great Amen. benefit. Amen. Amen. He is the appointed one, and now is the day in which these blessed things has dawned. Mm -hmm. We are now Amen. living in the dew of its morning. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Brethren, we have heard the joyful sound. This, this day has dawned. Mm -hmm. The gospel... The gospel is now and from the time of Jesus being preached with clarity and power to save the mm -hmm. meek who refuse to be abrasive and sheave their strength for the well-being of others are having glad tidings preached to them. Yes. The brokenhearted are being bound up and strengthened. Captives are being set free and prisoners are being shown the way of escape. Amen. And this is just the beginning. Amen. Like the, what, at, at, at when Jesus announced that, this what I, I, I meant to say it that way. That this is like the, this is the dawn, because there's more to come. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is Amen. Uh, this is this is kind of a, a a present yet future situation. Sin has been judged. The devil has been destroyed. Grace now reigns unto eternal life. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in and governing the people of God. Jesus is seated at the right hand of His Father. Believers have passed out of death yeah. into life. They have been seated with Christ in heavenly places, hid with Christ in God. Oh, but this is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. This is just the beginning of it. Yes. It's present and it's future. The things that we're speaking of here are things that we enjoy now in the first fruit message, but there's more to come. Yes. Amen. The kingdom of God is an, is an everlasting kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the salvation which He is working in Christ Jesus with eternal glory, that salvation is an eternal mm -hmm. salvation. It's ongoing. And, yes. and the longer it goes, the better it gets. Like Caleb and Joshua, we are now partaking of the first fruits of the promised land, and they are better than the fruits of this land. This isn't just poetic imagery. This is actually apostles' doctrine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The letter of the Hebrews speaks of those who have once been illuminated. They've tasted, they've tasted now of the heavenly gift. Amen. We're made partakers of the Holy Ghost. It speaks of those who have tasted the good word of God and powers yes. of the world to come. In other words, we've tasted the first fruits of a future inheritance. They have a portion now of what they will have in fullness then. This is the way the kingdom of God functions. God is making men fit for receiving all spiritual blessings in heavenly places yes. in Christ. Salvation provides a way for us to partake of these things now mm -hmm. and Forever and ever, world without end. Amen. Amen. And so when I look at a text like this, I think, well, these are benefits that I partake of now, but I can also be yes. saved by hope and look forward to more and a fullness of them Amen. then. Amen. Amen. So just think about these things. Just like God had to take away sins in order uh, for us to be a habitation of God in the Spirit, 
so he will remove all things that offend in order to make us fit for even more blessing. Yeah. This is the this is the way God the way God works. Mm -hmm. There's coming a day when that which is hidden will be made known. Yes. And there's coming a day when the glory of God shall be revealed in a more fuller uh, measure than we can ever imagine. Then the Son of God shall be manifested. Then the saints shall shine His lights, right? Mm -hmm. Then the earth and its works shall be burned up. Then all things that offend God will be dispelled from His presence and all those who are in His presence. Mm -hmm. Then we shall know as we have been fully known. Then God will deal out retribution. And then we shall be comforted. All the, th all the good things God has appointed for His people shall be enhanced, enlarged, and overflowing. And praise God, we will be made able to receive those things. Amen. This is the day of salvation and the time of comfort has dawned. Brethren, hold fast because high noon is coming. Right? Amen. So we partake up, but there's more to come. Amen. It's, gonna get, it's yes. just going to get better and better. Amen. Amen. Now I thought about talking about this. You know, it says that this is this was the preaching of the of the acceptable year of the Lord, but it's also the day of vengeance of uh -huh. God. And in the preaching of the gospel, both of these things must be preached. Both of these things are preached, and both of these things are beneficial to the people of God. Yes. Yes. Both Amen. the acceptable year uh -huh. and the day of vengeance yeah. are both a blessing to us. Amen. They're both in, uh, in in the gospel of our salvation. This is a year when God is pleased and those who come to Him by Christ are accepted by Him. It's an acceptable, the uh -huh. acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. It's a time when He may be found. We're living in that time. Yet there is coming a day of vengeance. Both the acceptable year and the day of vengeance are announced in the gospel and both are beneficial to us. Yes. In fact, how you think about the day of vengeance is indicative of of how you're participating in the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes, amen. amen. So, so the, the way that you view the judgment, day, the way that you view the day of vengeance, will actually, it'll, it'll, it's kind of like a, it, it'll reveal uh, the strength of your faith. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Amen. If you amen. are participating in the acceptable year of the Lord, then you look forward to the day of vengeance when God will destroy all things that mm -hmm. oppose you. Amen. amen. However, if you're neglecting so great a salvation, then the day of vengeance is a terrifying thing because in it, God will destroy you yeah. if you find yourself in opposition to God. But here's a blessed thought. I, I just like the way this is. The year of acceptance. Mm. Amen. The day of acceptance. Okay. Yes. I, I just like the way that's yeah, worked. Amen. And I don't know that we're, we're talking about actual time, but I just like the way it's worked. Yes. The year... Uh -huh. There's a year of acceptance and a day yeah. of vengeance. Man, yeah. man. It's as though for us the day of vengeance is brief while the acceptance of God is forever. And yes. Ever. There are things that only last for the night. Uh -huh. And there are better things that come in the morning. We Amen. can think about this, this year of acceptance as like a morning that never ends. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Well, let's talk about our blessed appointment. The blessed appointment unto those who mourn in Zion. I just like preaching about things like this. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. Everything that God does manifests who He is. In fact, everything that we do manifests who we are. Mm -hmm. Yes. But through this blessed appointment, we can see that God is a comforter. He's the, he's the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Our experience here is one of suffering. It's one of trial. It's, well, how about this? We're dwelling in the present evil world. Mm. And we're, 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 being, we're housed in a vile body. Mm. This, is, this, is, this is our experience now, Amen. surrounded by enemies. Enemies within, enemies without. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think in this, there's, there's temptation to despair. Mm -hmm. There's temptation to perceive that we are fit for destruction. But then these glad tidings ring clear. Mm -hmm. Then this is announced. That comfort is coming. Yes. That yeah. even in the midst of this, you, God, God has intended and appointed and made a decree, I will comfort those mm -hmm. who mourn. Amen. 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 I want to talk first about these the mourning, the ashes, and the spirit of heaviness that are mentioned here. Now, all these things, they they're I think about them this way, these are outward expressions. Mourning and, and ashes mm -hmm. and spirit of heaviness. These are outward expression of an inward experience. 
You know, this is something's going on inwardly and then expressed outwardly. Mm -hmm. This this mourning is being expressed. In fact, in fact, praise and joy are also something that's 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 inward that kind of expresses itself outward. Amen. Uh, there's, there's there really is no pretense in the kingdom of God. Amen. Yeah. There's, God is not mocked. You can no, there, there is no faking. There we're not talking about we're not talking about paid mourners. Right? We're not talking about uh, self-pity. We're not, we're not talking about these sorts of things. We're talking about people who are actually mourning over the situation that they find themselves in. Amen. Real, real mourning. And God takes note of these things, and He's determined that I'm going to comfort those people Amen. who are mourning yeah. in Zion. Amen. And that Amen. mourning covers many different things. I don't think uh -huh. we want to pinpoint anything. Everyone has their own experience in this. Yeah. But for those who mourn, and God knows those who are mourning in Zion, they shall be comforted. Yes. Amen. 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 With a sincere, and here's where it comes from, this morning is, it comes from a sincere love for God. Amen. And it comes from a zeal for His house. Amen. And, and, and those people who, who, who have a sincere love for God and a zeal for house, they find themselves uh, distraught over the current condition that they find both themselves uh -huh. in, Right, your own your own condition. There's another law in my members yes. waging yeah. war against the law of my mind uh -huh. and bringing me in the like the, this is a this is a dreadful experience. Yes, it, it, it causes mourning. Uh -huh. And also, you look about yourself, and and your soul can be vexed by yes. the experience in Sodom and Gomorrah, your own Sodom and Gomorrah that you might live That's in. That's right. But see, yeah. this causes mourning. Uh -huh. See, God, God's going to comfort you. Amen. 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 All of these expressions they speak of sorrow, distress, weariness. Uh, and they're, they're not owing to weakness. Don't be deceived by this. That doesn't mean that you're weak because you're mourning over the condition That's right. of these uh -huh. things. Uh, I, I, perhaps you'd be tempted to think that way. Uh, actually, those, those who are hardened by sin, they don't feel this. Amen. There is no mourning Amen. for those who are hardened by sin and become callous. They don't, there is no mourning over this, these situations. But those who know the guilt of sin, they'll cry over it. Yes. Amen. They will be Amen. distraught over their own Amen. sins and for the sins of the people. It's, it, it brings about a, a mourning, a spirit of heaviness. Yes, amen. And this is, you, you, in this, there's great fellowship in this, by the way. There's fellowship with God Himself. There's amen. fellowship with the Lord Jesus. Amen. There's fellowship with saints, brethren. Yes. You have uh -huh. fellowship one with another yes. in this mourning over these things. Amen. They will mourn. They will, they will cover themselves in ashes as those in Nineveh and, and clothe with a spirit of heaviness until the burden of sin is removed. In fact, remember David, David noted this as a result of his sin, that the joy of his salvation was gone. Return to me the joy of, of thy salvation. Right? Mourning among the people of God is produced when, when holy things are being defiled. Amen. When Amen. God is blasphemed. When uh -huh. sin is celebrated, this sort of that causes Amen. mourning. Amen. Uh, the tolerant, the lukewarm, the indifferent will never experience this mourning. Yeah. Amen. But those who are sensitive towards God, they will. Yes. Amen. Jeremiah Amen. mourned over the condition of the holy city. He uh -huh. mourned over the unrepentant people. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Moses even sought death because of the waywardness of the congregation. Mm -hmm. All those who mourn in this way find themselves in fellowships with all saints and God Himself, and God has appointed that He would comfort such people. Yes, Amen. 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 I thought about uh, this 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 word, and uh, you remember Ezekiel chapters eight and nine, when when He was shown into the into the temple and He saw the abominations that were taking place, and in chapter eight and in, in chapter nine uh, there was. Um, the destroying men and, and with weapons and slaughter and, and there was a, there was a man clothed in linen with an inkhorn. Uh -huh. He's yes. going to mark those who, who sigh and cry Amen. Yes. for Amen. all the abominations that Amen. be done in the midst thereof. Uh -huh. Amen. Make no mistake. Of, see, here's what's going to happen, brethren. The, the the world is going to hate you for pointing out these things and for sighing and crying. Yes. But, but see, the Lord is going to mark you. Amen. He's going to take note of you. Yes. And see, he, he's looking for such people with zeal. That's yes. what that is. That's, that's zeal for thy house has consumed. That's what that is. And yes. this is kind of like a righteous indignation over the things that are going on. And I have a zeal for God and for God's name. And, and, these, and it, causes, it causes a mourning. It causes a spirit of heaviness. And it will it'll rise up in you. And, and don't throw it off. 
Don't pretend that it's not there. Yeah. Don't don't fall into the trap that you must be positive if you're going to be a Christian. Got, yeah. Everything's got to be positive. He's got to be happy all the time. This is the experience. But see, God has determined to comfort people who are born. Amen. Amen. I, I thought about uh, uh, Paul's experience. Uh, the Apostle Paul experienced this and, and, and recorded it for us so we can mm -hmm. have fellowship with this. Here, here's what mourning in Zion might sound like. Oh, wretched man that I am. Yeah. Who will deliver me from the body of this death? Yeah. That's what mourning might sound like. Or, and and here, here's, here's the comfort that the gospel brings. There is therefore now no condemnation yes. to them that are in Christ Jesus. Mm. See, that's, see, see, there was mourning and there was comfort. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how much more then, right? Mm. Yeah. Mourning in Zion might sound like this. I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my yes. heart. Uh -huh. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. And then and he goes on in, in chapter 10 there, and he says, my heart's desire and my prayer to God uh, for Israel is their salvation. Yes. Is, that they might, is that they might be saved. Would it? That's, that's a sighing and a crying. Uh -huh. that's, that's, yeah. that's a mourning. That's a holy mourning. Yeah. God, God comforts people like that. Amen. 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 Hmm. And so the gospel might sound something like this. And so all Israel, all shall be saved. Amen. Right? Amen. There shall come out of Zion a deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. So you have you have record of the mourning and you have record of the comforting all in one. And and no doubt this this is all intrinsic into the preaching of the gospel. Amen. See, your experience of it now is experienced yes. by faith, brethren. And, and no doubt it's a spiritual comfort that builds you up and, and raises you up and, and, and it, you know, it'll cause a smile to come upon your face. But these sorts of things, this comfort is real and it's, it's substantial and it, it'll build you up and it'll strengthen you. Amen. And, it's gonna, and, and now it's going to come from the preaching of the gospel. That these Amen. things are sure. This, this is a short, this is an appointment of God. And so there's really no question whether comfort will come. Amen. Right? You just wait on the Lord. And so we talk about the, the mourning and the sorrow, the spirit of heaviness, but then he says, I'm going to give them beauty and a garment of praise and the oil of joy. Yes. Amen. Those who put ashes on their heads in mourning and sorrow and even repentance shall be clothed with beauty. Amen. Their appearance shall not be that of one who needs comfort, but of that of one who has been comforted. Amen. Yes. Amen. The appointment that they have before them will be evidenced on the other side. In other, in other words, you come, you come with the mourning, but you walk away with the comfort. Right? You, you walk away with beauty. And so people might see you and say, well, that's they, they look beautiful. <laughs> I'm not talking about in the flesh. I'm saying, yeah. this, is a, this is a beautiful countenance. Yes, amen. Right? Man, the Lord even talked about this. The, don't cover yourself and, and woe is me. This, this, is, this is the reality of the gospel. This yes. is the joy the Lord can actually bring to you. Mm -hmm. In the midst of Amen. These Amen. same situations that cause mourning, in the midst of that, you can be comforted. Yes. Right? You, you can have beauty for ashes. Mm -hmm. Amen. I like, I like to think about it this way. They'll, they will be adorned with beauty. Yes. Right? There's, there's an, they, they, they now walk in this adorning, adorning of the doctrine yes. in Amen. the midst of all this. Yep. In, the very, in the very place where they have an enemy in their own house. In their in their own constitution, in their own in their own body, yet they can they adorn the doctrine with walking in righteousness. Mm -hmm. Not only this, but they have cause for praise on account of this blessing. They shall be praising the Lord, and they shall be and, and in fact they, they shall be praised uh -huh. on the other side. Mm -hmm. Our entrance into the fullness of this appointment, it involves a participation in the heritage of the Lord. This is the heritage of the Lord. Like yeah. you actually are participating in, in the in the in the future inheritance, mm -hmm. in the heritage right, yeah. of the Lord. In other words, the appointment is a promise to forever dwell in the courts of the Lord. That's what that's really what we're talking about here. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what we're really talking about is fellowship with God. Yeah. And we're talking about this fellowship with God that is more prominent than your experience in the present evil world. Yes. That will actually just bring you that God Himself, His His salvation is 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 more uh, is more powerful than any experience you might, you might any suffering mm -hmm. you may. It's, in fact, it's not worthy to be uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Here's here's what the psalmist said: Thou wilt show show me the path of life. In Thy presence is fullness of joy. Amen. And at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. Amen. So there's a blessed outcome to all this. This is this is by design. This is how the Lord is doing. This is an appointment of God. Amen. 
that they would be trees of righteousness. Yeah, amen. The planting of the Lord, mm -hmm. that He might be glorified. Mm. Amen. 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 Yeah. The children of God are known. They're known for strength. Mm. Amen. They are strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Mm -hmm. See, you come with weakness. You and another, you're weak, but you're strengthened. By God Himself, mm -hmm. and this is all, and that experience in and of itself brings glory to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. They are firmly rooted and grounded. They shall be trees of righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's how He's describing these people: trees of yeah. righteousness. They're yeah. not. They're not moved. They're not easily moved. Right? They're not. They're not swaying to and fro. These are. They're trees. They're oaks. Uh, uh, someone brought up in the New American Standard. Mm -hmm. They're of righteousness. Yeah. Not, not uh -huh. just. Not just not easily moved, but they're. They're not easily moved from the righteousness yeah, uh -huh. that they've received yeah. from God mm -hmm. and the righteousness that they're now walking in as yeah. a new creature. Amen. They're trees. But they're not just any trees. They're righteous trees. They're mm -hmm. trees of righteousness. Mm -hmm. They live unto God even in the cursed environment. Yeah. How about yeah. that? I mean, you can only glorify God because of that. They're productive. Mm -hmm. I like that. They, they bear fruit. Yes. They bear fruit and productivity. They do the work of the kingdom. Their existence and their stability is actually contrary to their environment. Mm -hmm. What's going on? What's going on here? <laughs> well, as perceived by the world, that is because actually it's it's in, it's in strict accord with the environment that they experience in heavenly places. Amen. Yeah. It's just, Amen. It just looks a little bit different down here. Amen. Amen. See, the power behind their their efforts and their stability is God Himself, who ministers nourishment to them, and His benefits. To them, they add to their strength. And like you're going from strength to strength. What I'm saying here is that this, this oil of joy has utility. Mm -hmm. This garment of praise has utility. Mm -hmm. right? These things that the Lord gives you, this beauty, it actually is a help to you. These aren't just trophies or, or things that are just given to you. Everything that in the kingdom of God has utility. What God gives you strengthens you yeah. to be this. Uh -huh. So that you might they might be trees of righteousness. That's why he's given you these things. So that you might be trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. The blessings spoken of in Isaiah 61 have utility toward the saving of the soul. The beauty exchanged for ashes enables them to adorn the doctrine of Christ. Yeah. Amen. They aren't governed by a list of rules. But, they have, but the liberty wherewith Christ has set them free, they find themselves to use to adorn the gospel, mm. to adorn the doctrine. Yes, amen. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in mm. the beauties of holiness. Amen. Amen. That's, that's where that's coming. There's beauties of holiness that mm. we're talking about amen. here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Though they must endure much suffering and affliction, they are covered with a garment of praise in exchange for their spirit of heaviness. So you know, you know this, this might look like singing hymns in the prison house. Yeah. It, might, it might just... just Rise up in songs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and upon persecution, they praise the Lord for being considered worthy to suffer for His name. Amen. Finally, the oil of joy flows over their mourning and becomes the strength of the people. They will make their pilgrimage, pilgrimage from the enemy's land to the promised land, and they're going to come with everlasting joy upon mm -hmm. them. They're going to come with singing. How, how can this possibly be? Because they're trees of righteousness. Yes. The of the Lord. Why? They, I mean, last time I saw these guys, they were... Well, they were they were mourning, uh -huh. and they had a spirit yeah. of heaviness, yeah. and, and they had some ashes on their head. Yeah. What happened? Well, the Lord, that's what happened. Amen. The Lord, the yeah. Lord has appointed unto them comfort, yeah. Yeah. and He's appointed unto them beauty, and uh -huh. He's appointed them the oil of joy, and it had an effect on them. Amen. And that's how they come in, and when they come in, they get more of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Their existence, the fact that they are overcoming the world, is evidence of a divine work being accomplished in them. And when I'm talking about them, I'm talking about them. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about those who believe. That's what we're talking about. Yes, amen. Amen. They are strong, but the, their strength is from Him, right? So it, this is this is evidence of divine working. Mm -hmm. Because when they were by themselves, they didn't have these things. They are righteous, and their righteousness is not of them; it's of the Lord. The result of all this is that God is glorified. Mm -hmm. Yes. All of heaven is engaged in expressions of glory to God. When you get when when the when it's unveiled and you and you get the, to peer in to the to the throne room of God, you see you see you see 144,000. You you see an, an innumerable company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. You see men Amen. from every nation and tongue and tribe and people, and you see 
four beasts, and you see holy angels, and you see 24 elders, mm -hmm. and they're all saying the same thing, and they're all in the court, and it's all salvation unto God and unto the Lamb. It's all to the glory of God is what our yes. text says, and that's what's going on. We can see into it. Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne mm -hmm. and unto the Lamb. Amen. There's a response. Amen. Yeah. Blessing yeah. and Amen. glory and wisdom and Amen. thanksgiving and honor Amen. and power and might be unto God forever and ever. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You see, and this is all go because everybody knows it there. Yeah. Everybody knows when we're there. The only reason we're here is because of Him. Yeah. The only reason we're here because 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 we were comforted. Yeah. Because what we desired and what we didn't yet possess, we were given. Because the Lord is a comforter. Amen. That's why. Amen. Amen. Brother, morning, morning will come. Mm -hmm. It will come. The spirit of heaviness, it will come. Yes. But so will comfort. Amen. Amen. The way to endure hardship and heartache is not avoidance. Mm. You're, you're in the fellowship of saints who are walking the same course. Amen. And they all know the same things you know. Amen. Don't pretend that you're not experiencing what the Scripture says you're going to uh -huh. experience. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, this, is, this goes on among the people of God that they think yeah. that their situation is somehow different from the guy next door. Where, See, you're going to experience mourning. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Blessed are those who mourn. Amen. Yes. Amen. They shall be comforted. Amen. Amen. Don't avoid it. Mm -hmm. We're not just pretending that everything is okay and just trying to stay positive. There's real things that people are dealing with, and that's okay. Amen. Yes. In fact... That's kind of the norm in the kingdom of God. Yes. yes. And God has appointed and allowed this to happen so that He can comfort you. That's Amen. right. Amen. 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 There is a time to mourn. And blessed are they that mourn. Hardship <coughs> is hard. Heartache aches. Yes. This, is the, this is the reality yes. of it. Yes. But these things are also productive. Mm -hmm. yes. Don't just throw them off and pretend they're not there. Know that they're going to work yes. an eternal and far greater yes. weight in glory. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. The way to endure this world... And those experiences is to look to the world to come. Yes, amen. In fact, it's to look to the one who's there. Mm -hmm. It's to look unto Jesus. Amen. This is the way to overcome it. Don't avoid it. Amen. Yeah. Look to him that can provide comfort. Partake of the abundance and the overflow that has been graciously afforded to us by Christ. I yeah. think of the world to come this way. That, this is, that the world to come and heaven, its cup runneth over yeah. There's so much provision there that you've got able, you're able to partake of it now. Mm -hmm. There's just so much in heaven that you're partaker mm -hmm. of the heavenly gift now. Because mm -hmm. there's so much there. And there's more to come and you can partake of the more to come. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're, you're, you're actually getting a portion of it now. Mm -hmm. The day of acceptance is now. The day of salvation has dawned and brethren, high noon's come. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's more to come. Amen. Hope against hope. Yes. Believe unto the end. Yeah. Look unto Jesus, the forerunner, who was made a little while lower than the angels, but yeah. has been crowned with glory and honor. Yeah. Hey, who's made a little lower for the suffering of death. He's crowned with glory and honor. He's partaking of things. You can look unto him and says, if he's there, he's going to bring me there. Yeah. You look yeah. unto him and he's, yeah. this is assurance. Amen. 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 He's assurity. Amen. Amen. Of better promises. Look to him and see the fullness of your blessed appointment. For if you suffer with him, yeah. you shall also reign with him. Amen. Amen.